Hello, my name is Jaco van der Kooi, and with this Prezi, I'd like to share my experience of selling a software license model in a SaaS business world. What I learned is that you know, when we are starting to move to a SaaS model, that effectively we drop revenue significantly. Traditionally, what we say is that a SaaS model over multiple years brings the same amount of money. What this effectively means is that in the first year, we can only recognize the first 12 months of a SaaS revenue which often is 70% lower than what we would earn through a perpetualized software license model. At the same time, we see that for a business to business deal, we need approximately the same client acquisition cost. We experience the same visit on site, having to stay in a hotel and so on and so forth in order to convince a client. Therefore, the cost of acquiring that client have not much changed. As we see that with SaaS, a significant amount of bigger deals are potential, there is the potential for the cost to fold by as much as 10 times. The result of this is that we are getting less revenue at a higher cost. Now, this is not just you know like an experience that I see on paper. This is something I want to show to you how some of these companies out in the field, very successful companies, or appear to successful companies, experience this. Case in point is Jive. Jive is a very successful company as it has recently gone IPO. When we take a close look at the results, we see that the more Jive sells, if you see the gross of revenue, that the more, the more the cost of sales grows. And if you can see here, you see Jive growing from a $14 million cost of revenue of for marketing and sales in 2009, growing to a 40, almost $45 million cost of sales in 2011. This is significant. What you'll see that as a result, because of these large costs, the bigger the losses get. And that you know, starts to wonder. Now, is this just something that because Jive just went to IPO and it has a few clients, or is this, and is this problem, would this problem disappear if we start to see more clients? Well, let's take a look at Brightcove. Brightcove has been around for a little bit longer. And what we see down here, is that Brightcove has actually 4,679 clients. It's been around for several years, and we see here the same thing. As revenue grows, the cost of sales grows, and this is on a quarterly basis. And again, the result here is that there are significant losses. Now, this is for a company that's been around for several years, you know, has made a big impact in the market, has a significant amount of clients, and yet on 4,679 clients, it is unable to create a profit. Now, what we see is the traditional SaaS model, as was created, you know, dare I say, by Salesforce. The model was built about acquiring clients at a high cost, and then after you sustain the losses for several years, you pivot and you start milking those clients for more revenue. And as a result, you become profitable of, on a significant amount of clients. Now, is this truly the only way? Because you know, there's very few clients who can sustain losses or there's very few cost, uh, your companies who can sustain losses for s that many years and you know acquire clients at that high of a cost so i started to do some research and i found research in particularly by david scock from matrix partners and what david you know like explained to in some of his presentations which i highly encourage you folks to take a look at is that the cost in b2b sales are quite expensive because there's a f there's an element of human touch to it those costs actually really have an exponential relationship with each other. Now, how can we manage in a B2B environment an exponential client acquisition cost? Traditionally, and as what Dave Research indicates, that for many companies, lowering the client acquisition cost can be achieved by moving towards an inside sales model, moving more use of effective sales tools, um, you know, a number of companies out there, Eloqua and so on and so forth. However, for many companies selling it to B2B market, this is not an option. Lowering the client acquisition cost is simply you know, impossible since you know, th there may be an IT director involved. Also, what this shows is that when Jive and Brightcove, when they move to an inside sales model, they still face that exponential sales cost. They still face that problem. So let's take a look where the problem comes from before we start trying to fix it. Traditionally, in a perpetual software license model, what you do is you have the big upfront bogey when you'd launch for 25, let's say for 25,000 license, an, an enterprise-wide license. 
And the first year revenue offsets the cost of sales and sales engineers that are associated by traveling to the clients, doing an extensive on-site demo, shootout against competition and so on. And when it occurs, you know, those costs actually, when they're offset, still result into a, into a, a profit. But for the years following, what you'll see is the, uh, let's say, 18 to 22 percent maintenance and support has to provide further growth. And this allows sales to build a model that shows profit from in year one, two and three. If you now look at the hosted software model and, you know, like in SaaS as a business model, what we see is that the, the revenues in year one, you know, like are lesser because of course we take we are spreading the revenues out over multiple years but the cost of sales are still significant now in the beginning this was we deemed that this was not going to be a problem because we were going to recoup those costs in year two three four and five dependent on the term however what i found not only from my own experiences but also from talking to many of peers in the industry is that the revenue in year two and three also come at a cost and that they are actually not as guaranteed as as we thought they were but that we go out and have to continue to earn it. And for that, we have to continue to invest in it. Where previously uh, we had, you know, like a customer support organization needed in order to maintain the 18% maintenance and support and create a great customer experience, we now have to deploy a, a customer success manager. What we see is that we have to make in the ongoing years additional investments to, to gain those additional revenues. And the result of that is that simply there is not as much profit using the traditional sales method and the traditional SaaS model selling into B2B enterprise. So what do we do? Well, I like to say inspired by a recent movie, I thought, you know, like and uh, seeing the movie Moneyball, something dawned on me and I wanted to share that with you. There are rich teams and there are poor teams. Then there's 50 feet of crap. And then there's us. We got to think differently. What this movie showed is that there are lessons to learn from baseball. In this case, they say, is we are looking at sales the wrong way, the worst epidemic failure, and that they are looking at saying, like, we, we got to stop looking at the game as an emotional game, but we got to look at it as a, as a more rational game. Where is sales come from? How is it generated? So with that concept in mind, I started to think about sales. And my first step in order to go there is like, Let's figure out what's going on. So step one, a traditional sales funnel is effectively built around leads being transitioned by an inside sales team and creating sales out of that. Now, as we noticed with SaaS sales, those revenues from that sales funnel uh, is, are significantly less than the traditional where we would get a significant amount of software license or an, um, an, a recurring license. What we however see is that after having deployed it in the field with a SaaS model, there's a significant opportunities in the following years to increase the revenue to even larger than what was traditionally foreseen. For that, we got to in invest, invest in customer success. Now, what we'll see is that traditionally, we have invested very strongly in the customer acquisition part with a sales team that includes sales managers, sales engineers, architects, and specialists. Whereas we see that in the future, in the SaaS model, we are actually, where true success is taking place is after we make the client successful. This had made me question, are we defining, is the sales funnel still valid? And what I found is that we effectively, the sales funnel is an activity-based funnel and that it doesn't match the customer journey. The way how a customer you know, takes his journey is that first he hears about it. He then, you know, after he hears about the solution, whether this is based on him finding out that he has a problem or he's being encouraged by one of his peers to take a look at to it or a very, you know, like provocative salesperson tells him about it. After he understands he has this problem, he starts to like it. And he says like, okay, I understand what is going on and I'm going to investigate a little bit more. He does his research on the internet. He does a couple of trials and he finds several options and he starts to, to hone in on that. He finally makes a buy decision and after he makes that buy decision where he traditionally made an enterprise wide buy decision in the SaaS world he makes a buy decision for the next you know like three years on a small project with a 12 month after 12 month an exit clause into it that means that he needs to start using it in that first year and where traditionally the revenues were already up front you as a client as, as a vendor who are selling this to him still have to 
gain that additional revenues by him using more of it. And that can either be based on more licenses or it can be more of functionality and the same licenses. Step three, if I now look at this and say like, look, those five steps and I remove the funnel from it, they effectively create a circle. And the reason why I put that circle is that it allows me to put the future of sales straight in the center of that and manage a client through those steps. Now, for a buyer to find out about it, the best source of revenue or the best source of leads actually comes from the sales manager as he uses a peer reference in order to introduce the future buyer into you know, a successful deployment. And for that, he can use social media or you know, effectively uh, use sales uh, as a form of uh, search engine optimization. Step four is we now, if you want to implement this inside sales, we need to rewire our brain. And rather than fighting the cloud, because this, you know, at first glance, I definitely see that the cloud is making our, our life, you know, troublesome, but stop fighting about it. You know, like we see that, you know, like borders who fought it for the longest time and we see what happened to them. And at the same time, uh, Amazon embraced it, you know, and, and became hugely successful for it. So in order to embrace it, we got to rewire our brain. And that was the light bulb that went off in my head because I believe that we need to change the way we sell in the enterprise. We need to change the way we sell to the same way that how that buyers have changed. Now, in order to change, there's five things we need to change. We need to start looking at the use of different tools, among others, leverage social media. We need to take a look at different kinds of content, more video, more interactive. We need to change and check in on in the new kind of selling skills. How do we do effective storytelling online? How do we engage a client online? How do we earn their trust online? Since most of the information gathering by a client is now done online for as much as 80% of the process of information gathering is done online. Next is we need to train differently. Clearly, if the client is online, we need to be able to hire, train, compensate and organize in a different kind of structure. As, and lastly, we need to change and embrace a different methodology where we are able to engage the client, earn their trust, yet provoke and consult in a matter and use different tools, skills uh, online in order to achieve that. All this combined tells you that we have an opportunity. Now, in various other presentations that you can follow on, on uh, Prezi and that you can find through Prezi as well as others is, is more detail about how to do this. You, will, you can find some LinkedIn Prezi's, you can find the training Prezi and so on and so forth. With that, we have come to the end, but not before uh, a moment of saying a moment of thanks to David Scott at Matrix Partners, who really encouraged me to take a look deeper into this after years of, of painful experiences, seeing that it didn't work originally as I had planned. I wish you good luck. I hope this was of uh, use to you. And if any questions come up, please look me up on LinkedIn. You can find me also on my blog, futureofsalesisnow.com. Or you can uh, follow me on Twitter at hashtag Inderyako. And with that, I say thank you.